In this short video, I want to give a refresher for experienced investors and an overview for novice investors on balance sheets. No lesser figure than Sir David Tweedy, knighted for his contribution to accountancy, not a lot of people can say that, said that the balance sheet is the most important of the three primary financial statements. So I'll look at roughly what it tries to do and the strengths and weaknesses. Do I agree with him or not? So here we go. First of all, there are three primary statements. If you open up a set of accounts, rummage your way through, midway to two thirds of the way through a document that could be 200 pages long, you'll find these three statements. I'm gonna focus on the balance sheet. The profit and loss account is a story telling how we got over the last 12 months through sales and costs to a profit figure. The cash flow statement is another story that looks at cash in, cash out, but the balance sheet is like a snapshot, taking a photograph of the company at a particular point in time and identifying roughly what it's worth, but using some accounting rules rather than necessarily using the rules that you might use if you're actually going to buy the thing. All right. So unlike the profit and loss account and the cash flow statement, which are kind of like almost a cine camera movie of the year, the balance sheet is a snapshot. So I could say to you right now, give me a statement of your net worth and you'd start to list your assets and liabilities now. And that's the point of balance sheets. They're prepared at one point in time. Now, what do they try and answer? Three key questions, all right? Balance sheets are full of jargon, but remember, they're trying to do just three things. Number one, what does the business own? They're called assets, long-term and short-term. Secondly, what does the business owe to third parties, banks, creditors, suppliers, and so on? Those are known as liabilities, all right? To get to your net asset position, just as if I asked you what your assets were, you might say, Tim, I've got a house. Oh, wait a minute, but there's a mortgage. Okay, so you've got an asset and a liability. The net difference is your net asset position. Companies do the same thing. And then at the bottom, there's a bit of jargon called shareholders funds, which essentially is how it's all been paid for. Somebody somewhere had to inject capital in at the start so the business could actually get up and running and fund its initial opening assets. And those shareholders funds are normally included at the bottom. Right? It's not the American presentation of a balance sheet, but it is the typical UK presentation. Now, in a bit more detail, this is only an overview. What does that look like? Those three questions being answered. Well, not surprisingly, the balance sheet has a top half, the assets and liabilities, what we own, what we owe other people, and a bottom half called shareholders funds, all right? And it's called a balance sheet because the net asset total, assets minus liabilities, should be equal to the total that you get when you add up all the bits at the bottom. In other words, you can't conjure a business out of thin air. The how's it all been paid for by shareholders has to equal what has actually been paid for, all right? Now, in the top half, just a very quick tour here, you've got long-term assets and short-term assets. Fixed assets, tangible, the ones you can kick, like property, plant, machinery, and intangible goodwill, licenses, and so on. Current assets, short-term stuff, stuff that won't be there in a year's time. So stock, trading stock, that is. Uh, receivables, you hopefully collect those fairly quickly, and cash, for example. Then you've got the what we owe. So there's what we own. All right, here's what we owe, called liabilities. And they're divided, not surprisingly, like a mirror effect, into short-term, current, and long-term. All right, current being immediate bills to be paid. Remember, this is a snapshot, just as I, if I asked you what you currently owe people, you might say, mm, actually, I did borrow 10 pounds last night when I was in the pub. Well, businesses do the same. It's a snapshot, what they owe suppliers, what they owe the tax man, for example, what they owe in terms of interest payable short-term. And then long-term liabilities, that's where your mortgage would come in, because you're not gonna just clear that tomorrow morning. All right, for a business, longer term loans and so on. Gives you a net asset total, that's all the assets, minus all the liabilities, and as I just mentioned, it balances at the bottom, a description really of the cumulative shareholder funds that have paid for this whole thing, these net assets at the top. So share capital and share premium just reflect the injections of capital that shareholders have put in, in the past and reserves is all the accumulated profit the business has ever made since it started. And all of that, if the business were liquidated tomorrow, belongs to the shareholders. Great, 
Now, why does Sir David Tweedy say this is a crucial statement? A lot of people skip over it. They look, for, look at profit, want to see profit, or they go straight to cash flow. But balance sheets matter. Why? In a nutshell, strengths. The version that's published and sent out to shareholders is audited, signed off, true and fair view, complies with all the rules and regulations. That's not true of you know, management presentations, forecasts, and all the rest of it. Okay? So that is a big strength. Auditors don't always get it right. Companies do sometimes collapse, having been signed off, as it were. But nonetheless, it is a comfort factor for somebody looking to invest in the business or lend it money. Consistent structure, number two. Balance sheets have to be prepared a certain way. Now, in some sectors, they look different to others. Banks don't present the same balance sheets as retailers, for example. But nonetheless, each year, they have to prepare it to a consistent formula or recipe, if you like. And that's useful because it means you can do comparisons more easily. It's cumulative. This is what differentiates a balance sheet from a profit and loss account. A profit and loss account is one year. One year. You're going to really make an investment decision based on one year's results. I hope not. That's rhetorical. Are you really going to make an investment decision based on one year's cash flow numbers? Again, I hope not. But a balance sheet is the cumulative picture. How did we get to where we are today and where are we today? So that is a pretty relevant statement. Odd that people tend to overlook balance sheets. It must be the jargon. I think it puts them off. It's the hardest statement in many ways to fix. It's, it's in some ways the more complicated statement, but you know, asset valuation rules are pretty tight. So although balance sheets can be rigged, can be fixed, you can play around with them and so on, it is a little bit harder to manipulate than a profit and loss account or a cash flow statement. It's relatively easy for management to paint the picture they want with the profit and loss account using special underlying weird profit numbers. That's not as easy with the balance sheet. If you can read a balance sheet, you really can understand the business properly. And it's very useful to creditors and lenders because this is where they discover what assets the business has got, how secure their loans are, and so on. Now, great, but is it perfect? No. I'm just going to finish by highlighting a few weaknesses. Number one, it's out of date as soon as you get it. Balance sheets are prepared for an accounting period that ends on a particular date. So it's not as up to date as you'd like. Um, there are things missing. So David Tweedy himself said, one of my great ambitions is to fly on an aircraft that actually appears in an airline's balance sheet. In other words, under the accounting rules, assets can go missing. You look at a balance sheet, they're not there. Football clubs are a good example. Are all the players, their biggest asset, always on the balance sheet? No, thanks to a quirk in the, quirk in the accounting rules. The ones they buy are, the ones they home grow aren't. Weird, but there it is. Fair value minefield. Accountants like to put things on the balance sheet at a sort of estimate of their latest fair value, but that can make asset values volatile. It can throw up all sorts of problems. It's not easy always to get an accurate snapshot of what a business is worth. Missing liabilities, you'll sometimes find you have to go rummaging around in the notes if you're looking at tobacco firms, for example, to find out about the latest court cases being taken out against them. It's not always sitting there in front of you in the balance sheet. And they can be complicated. I think the reason people ignore balance sheets is they are a little bit harder to understand than profit and loss accounts and even cash flow statements. But I would say the effort is well worth while as either a novice or more experienced investor. That was a very fast tour. In future videos, I'm going to look at sort of balance sheet red flags. Any questions or comments, the usual email address.